Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I have the X1 Carbon here and I'm going to be fixing a couple of things so that I can hopefully get rid of the uh, kind of that wavy rippleness that you can see on some of your prints on those flat surfaces. Um, some people call it ringing, um, banding. Uh, it's pretty well known on this printer to uh, have that kind of issue. Uh, so we're going to go through and um, cover a few things that should go ahead and fix that. So let's get started. We're going to be covering four different issues essentially all in this task. So the first one is going to be we're going to be fixing our gantry to our y-axis rod um, squareness. We're going to want to fix that to make sure that they're perfectly perpendicular to each other. Uh, we're also going to be fixing the belt tensions. We're going to be fixing the belt tracking on the idler pulleys and then we're also going to be establishing a new uh, reference point to make sure that we maintain those um, that X and Y squareness. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, here are the tools that I'm gonna use. What I have here is, I will leave a link in the description, but we're gonna use this to establish our perpendicularity uh, between our X and our Y. I'll leave a link in the description so you can download these. I use some neodymium uh, ring magnets that I picked up from Home Depot. You don't really need these. You can use like some uh, alligator clamps or some uh, paper clips or something else to secure the um, L angles that we're gonna be using here in a little bit. Razor blade, you're gonna need a scale. You can also use dial caliper. Dial caliper will work probably the most accurate. I do have a set of feeler gauges. This will come in handy, not really required, but it's good to have it on hand. Allen wrench, two millimeter. You can also use one of these instead. Uh, you're gonna need some, either some sort of sterile alcohol white pads, 70% IPA. Uh, I also have 99% in a bottle, you can use that too. And then you're gonna need some form of tape. So I have some extreme temp vinyl electrical tape, or you can use duct tape, or you got some frog tape or whatnot, some masking tape. Um, any kind of tape will work. I'm personally using this at the moment. Then you're gonna need two triangles. Okay, so these are for our 90 degree angles that we're gonna be checking. Now the key is they need to be the same. Okay, at least at least at least on one edge, they need to be exactly the same dimension. All right. I'm going to go ahead and put a little tape on this edge because these prints that I printed out, they're just super loose. The thing you don't want to do is you don't want to wrap it around the edge, okay? Because that might also, if you get a wrinkle in it, you'll get a false indication um, of squareness and you just don't want that. So I'm going to add a couple layers until this fits a little better. It's almost there. So leave it like a, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch off of that edge or so. We're going to move the gantry forward and we're going to install these little clamps, okay? If you come in here, they're very simple. They just snap right into the y-axis, just like that, just like that, okay? Now, as I'm doing this, keep in mind that if you have already tried to follow the instructions um, from the printables page that the developer of these tools um, publicized, just note that I'm not following that same exact methodology, but I am following kind of the overall, uh, it, it's going to yield you the same result. You want to make sure you keep these oriented properly. so. If I know that they're perfectly the right length on one edge that we're going to use, then I want to mirror image it this way. Okay, so that way these two ends are going to be the same length. Then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to stick it inside. Okay, you want to make sure they're fully seated into those clamps, then I'm going to take the other one, and again, I'm going to fully seat it into those clamps. I want to hear that knocking that they've bottomed out in them, okay? And you can rotate them up and down. You want to make them pretty much level, okay? You want to level them out. Try to make them kind of touch each other, and they overlap in the center. So the next thing you're going to do is, you're, after they're bottomed out against the clamps, you're going to push it towards the back, okay? Towards where the gantry where the gantry housing is supposed to touch the frame, okay? That's what you're gonna do. You're gonna push it back until it touches, so you'll hear it. The tip of that triangle is touching that frame, okay? 
I'll do the same thing for the other side. Push it back until it touches. And I'm going to get my little magnets at this time. So I'm going to use a stack of two and a stack of two. So what I'll do is I'll just put it at the top. And I'll be a little tricky here, sneak my arm in there and make it grab each other. Okay. Now, just doing that might have disturbed where we position the triangles. So at this time, I want to actually double check, make sure everything's seated where we wanted to set them. What we are going to look for now is how much one of these triangles is overlapping over or under the other one. So right here, I can, I can flick that bottom one, okay, because my edges are not perfectly aligned. Just take some dial calipers, try to sneak it into the box here. Yeah, maybe maybe 0 0.65, 0 0.7 is about where I'm at. That's how far off that my box housing, where my gantry uses as a reference point to establish square, that's how far off it is out of square. All right, so I went ahead and adjusted this side to artificially exaggerate what I'm seeing so it's better to show on camera. We took the measurement. For me, it's 0.7 millimeters. In order to make these flush, I need to bring this left side forward. And in order to do that, we're going to prep a shim to install back here at the reference point. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a shim out of some tape. I'm going to go ahead and layer up a couple layers of electrical tape is all I'm doing. So I'm going to actually make two and you'll see why in a second. This is going to help me in my measurements to measure how thick I've made this. Okay. So for this particular one, I'm going to do about four layers and then we'll measure and see how much thickness we got. So for those of you who don't know, the end of a caliper has a, has a plunger at the back and that's for depth gauging. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that depth gauge rides in between the two pieces of rubber that are equal thickness because I put four layers here, four layers here. And what I'll do is I'll rest the edge of that caliper on there and then I'll drop that plunger down. And you can see right now I'm at 0 0.68, 0 0.67 ish for my height. So I'm going to call that good. So from there, all I do is I take one of these and I'm going to go ahead and cut a little shim out of it. Okay. So there's my shim that I just created. So I'm going to set that right here gently for now. I'm going to get an alcohol prep pad or you can get some 99% uh, IPA on a rag. I just had a bunch of these handy, so I'm going to use one of these. So what you want to do is you want to clean this area right here. Okay. Sorry for the focus is really bad, but this is where the gantry meets the housing. So you want to clean that up with a little bit of IPA, let it gas off, and wait for it to fully dry so you get max adhesion possible. I ended up putting my shim right there. Okay, and you can see it. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take out the triangles here and our little clamps that we installed on the Y axis. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is go through the belt tension process. Okay, we're gonna loosen all these up. We're gonna exercise this gantry on all axes. Okay, exercise those belts, get them spinning in those idler pulleys. Now, the key difference here is what I want you to do is I want you to push back on it after the tool head is in the center of the gantry, okay? And now we're going to do the tightening process, but what we want to do is we want to put a mild amount of pressure, not too much, but just a mild amount of pressure on the gantry so that you know that there is positive contact to the frame and that new shim that you just installed. Okay. Now you should be able to cycle it around. It should hit evenly when you check them. Uh, a good way to check to see if the belt tensions are proper is you can actually come back here and you can pluck them, okay? And they should sound pretty much the same. That tells me that both of those belts are the same tension. Okay, the next thing we're gonna work on is the belt tracking. Now, what do I mean about belt tracking? I mean, this belt needs to ride um, in the center of this idler pulley, okay? So right now you can see the top of that belt is riding against the top flange of that idler pulley, okay? Now, if I move the tool head, you'll see it up there. 
you'll see it just spinning while it's hugging that top flange, okay? So we want to change that to right in the middle. So I got the same problem on the left, I won't bother to show you. Uh, but let me talk about the methodology and so you can understand how to adjust this and then we'll actually go ahead and do the adjustment. If this is your belt going this way, you need to have complete perpendicularity between the axis of the idler pulley to the belt axis. Okay, so that's what we're trying to go for. Now, the next pictures are very much exaggerated. Okay, and sorry, this is kind of a crappy drawing here, but let's start with this one. So, if your idler pulley is tipped to the right, okay, then this belt is going to want to loosen because it's already under tension, so it's going to want to naturally walk its way to essentially, for lack of a better phrase, a path of least resistance. It's going to want to loosen itself up because you have that energy stored in here under preload from the tension. So what's going to happen is this belt is going to walk down. If it's tilted to the left, okay, then this guy is going to want to walk up. So in order to correct for that, we don't necessarily want to loosen the belt anymore because I'd rather have a tighter belt than a looser belt in one of these systems. So I'm going to actually, you'll have a bolt, you'll have the screws here on the, on the actual tensioning system. You'll have one here and one here. Okay, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to rotate about the one of these um, bolts, okay? so that we rotate it back into this kind of attitude, okay? So that's what we're gonna do, and I'll show you here on the actual device. In real life application here, so if I move this tool head back and forth, that, that belt is staying on the top. So what that means is if I wanna bring this belt down, I need to loosen this top one, and right here, and here, this is all part of the same idler pulley assembly. So this is the idler pulley assembly housing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen this top one only, I'm gonna keep the bottom one tight, and I'm gonna go ahead and give this a gentle push that direction so that it makes this straight up and down, okay? And then what I'll do is I'll just keep doing that. I'll, I'll put a little bit of influence on this as I'm t loosening this up, put a little influence on it to try to get it straight up and down. Then I'll tighten that guy down, I'll move the head, and see where the belt tracks. And I might have to do this three or four times before I actually get it just right, because um, it's not an exact science. I can do it, so you guys can probably do it. So I'm going to loosen this up a little, maybe even if I take my little... If, if you got some tough fingers, maybe you use your fingers. Just kind of influence it a bit, tighten up that, tight, that top one again. Move it back. Ah, do you see it drop? See, so it didn't take much. Now... It's kind of dropping and going up and dropping and going up, but already that's at least a better improvement because it's not continuously riding on one on uh, one flange here. So I, I'll try to get it dialed in a little better, but even that, having it for the majority of the travel not riding on those flanges is already going to get me a little bit better results. That's about as good as I could get it. I'm at about I'm at the back here. By the time I push forward, there's only a little bit of travel where it starts touching. Maybe a half inch forward. But the vast majority of it is about as good as I can get it. So it's not an exact science. And I think really the reason why is because there's so many other idler pulleys in the system and they're not all perfectly parallel and perpendicular to each other and whatnot. Because, I mean, you have... You have one over here, and you have one over here, and you have this, and you got the motor, and um, you know you got all the ones over there on that side. So I think just a combination of all these pulleys. Yeah, there's another one. Um, you know, I think there's just perhaps it's just too much variability in the system for them to be, you know, precision always in the dead center like you see right there. Um, but as long as it's not riding on one of those flanges the whole stinking time that it's printing. Um, you're better off than most of us. A way to do a confirmation to make sure that you're still square after doing all that work, because in theory we're done, but I like to do another check. Okay, so come back over here. I put these back in place. So now the difference is, let me steal the camera. The difference now is instead of hitting the back over here, we're gonna hit the front of the gantry um, in order to make sure that it's still square. So again, you wanna make sure these are bottomed out into the clamps 
on all four clamps. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and move the gantry real close. And then we're just gonna scoot that until it touches. And you just wanna do it lightly because you don't actually wanna influence the position of the gantry, okay? So we're touching. We're all squared up still. Okay, then I'll move the gantry away at that point. Lift it up a little bit and then check my parallelism here. It's hard to see, but those are dead on. Um, I'll get a photo and put it up. Once you are satisfied that everything looks square, your belt is tracking as close to center as it can seemingly get, uh, you'll just take everything apart, take everything out, and then you'll put your printer back together, put your glass back on, reconnect your AMS if you have one, and then uh, make sure you perform a vibration calibration uh, before you do a test print, because we did mess with the belts, we messed with the gantry, um, we did a lot of fussing about, so you want to make sure you do a new vibration test. I know we covered a lot. Um, hopefully this works for you. Uh, let me know in the comments if it does or if it didn't. Um, I'd love to always improve the process or maybe even another tool or whatnot or a better way of doing things would be great. Um, hopefully this works for you and solves your uh, banding issues um, like it did mine. So best of luck to you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments as well. Like I said, I'll post a link to those um, tools in the description below. And uh, happy printing. See you guys next time.